The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say we will become free? Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. A slave does not remain in the household forever, but a son always remains. So if the son frees you, then you will be truly free. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, but you are trying to kill me because my word has no room among you. I tell you what I have seen in the Father's presence, then do what you have heard from the Father. They answered and said to him, Our father is Abraham. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works of Abraham. But now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You are doing the works of your father. So they said to him, we are not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Did you catch that the very beginning of today's Gospel from John chapter 8, verse 31 is Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, this is a very contentious uh, section of John's gospel. There's a rebuttal back, back and forth. Jesus is hitting hard, they're hitting hard back, back at him. So one might assume that this is another example of Jesus arguing with the scribes and the Pharisees, the Jewish leaders, his usual foes. But it begins by saying, Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him. In other words, these are people who have been attracted to Jesus's miraculous deeds and to the power of his preaching. And Jesus challenges them to go to a deeper level and they resist. <laughs> in other words, they want to remain on the surface. It reminds me of the parable of the sower and the seed, and some of the seed, you know, falls on the rocks and it springs up. It starts to grow, but it doesn't have any roots. Or the seed that grows among the thorns and it starts to grow up, but then it gets choked. That's these kinds of people. Jesus challenges them and they resist that challenge. And what's the challenge? Jesus says, if you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples. So you say you're my disciples. All right, what does it mean to be my disciples? It means you're going to remain in my word. In the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius, Jesus has us meditate on God's word. It begins, the exercises begin with knowing that God loves us. Step into that place of acknowledging that we are deeply loved. But it doesn't stop there. He then moves on to acknowledge, meditate on the fact that we are sinners, that we are broken, that we can't save ourselves, that we're inconsistent. Like St. Paul says, the good that I would do, I don't end up doing. The evil I, won't end up, I, I don't want to do, I end up doing. Jesus says, every time you commit a sin, you're a slave to sin. 
I've come to free you from that sin. And the followers of Jesus that Jesus is addressing resist that. And they're saying, we're not slaves. What are, you, what are you talking about? We're free. We're good people. Don't tell me I'm a sinner. I was talking to one former Catholic and asked, you know, why have you fallen away from the faith? I've fallen away from the faith because the Catholic Church is always talking about sin. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be told I'm a sinner over and over and over again. You know, that's depressing. Is it the truth? <laughs> we have a crisis in our society today surrounding truth. Depending on what news source you li listen to, you're going to be absolutely convinced that this is the truth. You listen to a different news source, and this is the truth. And they are diametrically opposed. It's like we're living on two different planets. Truth is a major theme in John's Gospel. Jesus says, the truth will set you free. Later on, Jesus is interrogated by Pilate. And Jesus says, my kingdom of th is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my followers would have fought to prevent my being handed over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not of this kind. So Pilate says, so you are a king. Yes, I am a king. I came into the world for this, to bear witness to the truth. And all who are on the side of truth listen to my voice. And do you remember Pilate's retort? Truth. <laughs> What's that? In John's Gospel, at the Last Supper discourse, Jesus says truth is not an abstraction. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. To know the truth is to grow in the knowledge of who God is and who we are to know ourselves as loved and broken, to know ourselves as loved sinners. It's so difficult to put those two together. It's like I'm loved, <laughs> I'm really special, or I'm a terrible, lousy wretch. But to put those two together is very difficult. And that's the growth in discipleship. It's to know that God continues to love us, but to see that we are works in progress. And as we focus on Jesus, who is the truth, Jesus, who is the life, Jesus, who is, is the way, then we come to understand who we are and who we are not. That we can allow ourselves to be loved even in our brokenness. St. Paul, I mentioned this earlier, St. Paul, in his letter to, to the Romans, this is well after St. Paul's conversion, said, what a wretch am I. The good that I would want, want to do, I don't do. The evil that I don't want to do, I end up doing. But he doesn't commit suicide as a result of that. He says, what a wretch am I. Who will save me? And then he leans into his faith, thanks be to God for Jesus Christ. Here's the great St. Paul saying, I'm not yet consistent. There's a gap between who I want to be and who I, who I am. And that's true for every one of us. And when we acknowledge that, that's when we begin to grow into the people that Jesus wants us to be. And there's a liberation in that. I've said many times, quoting Peter Kraft, sinners think they're saints. The saints know themselves to be sinners. And that's not, a, that's not depressing. It's liberating. Because as Jesus says in, in today's gospel, anyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. 
And these would-be disciples of Jesus resist that. They don't want to hear that. We are good people. What are you talking about? We're not slaves. We've always been free. What are you, what are you telling us this depressing news for? The result is they remain enslaved. But if we recognize the ways in which we are caught in sin, and this is the whole early movement of the spiritual exercises, St. Ignatius would have us pray about that, pray for the knowledge of the ways in which we are enslaved, the ways in which we are not free, because that's a gift. This past weekend, at Bellarmine, we had yet another 12-step retreat. Most of the, it was a men's retreat. Most of the men that came were alcoholics. But some, were, some of them are sex addicts. Some of them are drug addicts. And, the, and it's so inspiring for us that work on the staff at, at Bellarmine to have these people come and to say, I'm powerless over alcohol. Reality is, I'm an alcoholic. I'm a drug addict, I'm a sex addict, I'm powerless over that. But through God's grace, I'm able to be sober. Through God's grace, I'm able to move out of my addiction. And it isn't me, it's not my willpower, it's God's grace at work in my life that is setting me free. But I need to continue. This is the beginning of the 12-step program. I need to acknowledge I can't do this by myself. It's only through God's grace that I'm able to be sober. It's only through God's grace that I'm able to give up my porn addiction. It's only through God's grace that I'm able to give up my drug addiction. That is so inspiring to hear people acknowledging their weakness and claiming the freedom that comes through God. As opposed to these would-be disciples of Jesus who say, hey, Jesus, I'm following you, but I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I hear lots of confessions, and it's a good thing to go to confession. But it saddens me greatly when people come to confession and they say, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. My last confession was five years ago. I really haven't done much wrong. But I'm just going for the grace of the sacrament. Seriously? You haven't done anything wrong? Why don't you talk to your spouse? Why don't you talk to your children? Why don't you talk to your employer? Why don't you even talk to your employees? Maybe they'll give you a little data there. Our egos resist, our egos resist seeing our own imperfections. The ego doesn't like to acknowledge that. But when we know that we're deeply, deeply loved, then we can move into this place of truth and acknowledge who we are and all of our weakness. Our Lenten celebration is moving to a climax. And Jesus' crucifixion makes absolutely no sense at all if we say, Jesus died for them, Jesus died for them, but, but I'm a good person. I'm a good person. Well, then, we don't need a savior. The only way that we can enter into this climactic movement of Lent is to say, Jesus, I need you. I'm broken. I'm sinful. I'm inconsistent. And yet you love me. You love me. Thank you. Thank you, because I can't do this by myself. I need you as my Lord. I need you as my Savior. I need you as my God. The followers of Jesus in today's gospel couldn't come to that. And the result is they, they push him away. More than that, Jesus says, you're trying to kill me. 
I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear it. Brothers and sisters, let's pray that we do hear this, that we can look in the mirror of truth and not be afraid of our brokenness. That's that's why I mentioned earlier, it's so inspiring to be a part of that 12-step retreat and listening to these people who say, I'm broken, I'm an addict, you know? I need to constantly acknowledge that and claim that it's God's grace that keeps me sober. It's God's grace that keeps me from going back to the drugs. It's God's grace that keeps me from going back to pornography. It's not me, it's God's grace. That's freedom. That's truth. That's the gospel. Amen. Amen. Heart to heart, hand in hand, praying for grace to understand. Spirit of Jesus, open our hearts to live and to love the gospel.